As we look ahead to the next of those January 6 public hearings, we were joined today by documentarian Nick Quested, who's shocking and never before viewed video of the Capitol the day of the insurrection played a huge part. It was the opening act in the select committee's opening argument on Thursday night in primetime. The footage dealt with the violence and the coordinated, multi-step efforts to overturn the 2020 election. Quested, who filmed these dramatic scenes, was embedded with the Proud Boys after Election Day and invited by them to film them up close as they went about their day on January 6th. Beyond the visual storytelling and that priceless evidence, which he's turned over to the FBI, Quested testified on Thursday about what he saw after meeting with the committee privately. He's our guest. Um, thank you so much for being here. Was this a, I mean, I imagine your stock and trade in being embedded is predicated on not having to go and testify in prime time about what you saw. I mean, how has this been for you? Um, it's a pretty surreal experience, but it, it's fine because we really stick to the facts about what we saw. So for us, it's not that much of an issue, but it's, it is, it does, present something that I've never faced before. This detail um, that you offered in your testimony about how they went for tacos um, before the violence that played out on all of our TV screens, I, I, it just sounded, made them sound so sociopathic. You know, the killers had to eat. What, what was the point of that detail? What did that signal to you? Um, I mean, it's true. We, we stopped. We'd, we'd walked down the mall. We'd gone around the reflecting pool. We'd been around the whole of the Capitol building. And then they went for lunch and we had tacos. And it was just a little bizarre. I mean, it's a little detail. And it was sort of said in a, you know, I didn't mean it to be glib or flippant because it's, it's what happened. But it's, you know, it sort of changed the tone of some of the testimony. Um, but for me, I was, they're just, a, it is a little bit of a bizarre organization. Like you, but they had to eat, like it's lunchtime. Like, what do you think the evidence that you possessed and testified to, what role do you think it plays in this story that, I mean, have you, have you been able to since last Thursday sort of sit back and catch any of the hearings and, and try to digest what piece of the puzzle you're filling in? Well, yeah, I mean, I've, obviously, I'm I, to to set the time that they were walking away from the monument is important because it it indicates that they weren't the ambition wasn't to watch the speech of President Trump. They had another agenda. They weren't even there. They weren't even there. And their agenda was what? Well, I I only followed them. I don't know what their agenda was. I mean, there's other people who can have a better idea. Well, of what you filmed was the stacks and the intrusion, and obviously, when you've seen the public testimony of the law enforcement officials, they engaged in quote medieval hand-to-hand -hand combat. Was any of that foreshadowed in your time with them? Well, I mean, there was. We, we when I was with them beforehand, we marched up and down the mall, which is what I thought we were going to be doing that day. I thought that. I thought there was a potential for violence in the evening that they would engage with Antifa or BLM, but I didn't see, uh, you know, what transpired happening. I had no idea it was going to happen. And I was very underprepared. Like most of my PPE I'd left, you know, in the car because, you know, walking around with a, you know, uh, you know, a vest, you know, a ballistic vest is heavy. They weigh 30 pounds. I didn't want to do that again all day. I'd done that a few times and it's hard work. Did they want you to continue to film them once they were engaged in violence? I lost, so once, so, so basically once the barriers come down, it's sort of every man for themselves. And so I can see all sorts of people in my footage, whether it's Proud Boys or Oath Keepers or, uh, or just Trumpers or just rioters or generally. Um, so I wasn't really aware of them per se around me. And sometimes I would bump into them. I interviewed one of them. Uh, who had ski goggles on um, and, um, you know, a very brief sort of stand-up, not even a stand-up, just like a, I asked him a question. Um, but, yeah, I basically lost them, and you can find them in the footage subsequently, but I wasn't there following them at that point. I'm just trying to get to the point of contention and film the, the two sides of the, the, of the uh, argument at that point. Um, the timestamp that you talk about and the importance to the committee's broader story, just remind us what that is. What time is it that they arrived? So we arrived on the mall at 10.30 a.m. and we met the, uh, yeah, it's a little bit on that. So um, they gathered at the mall at 10 and I picked them up at 10.30 as they're walking towards the Capitol. 
and the president doesn't start speaking until close to noon. Um, so they were well away from the capital at that point, did well they, away from the monument at that point. Did they ever talk about their role in being there early? Um, no, but they're in Eddie, uh, Eddie Block's live stream footage. Eddie Block is a proud boy uh, and live streams their event. Uh, there's a proud boy called Milkshake who says, um, well, we're going to go and storm the Capitol. Um, and uh, Nordine um, r reminds him to, that that's probably inappropriate language. Inappropriate language, but not, not behavior. <laughs> um, I, I want to I just try to understand whether or not this, this time that they're marching being different from the time of Donald Trump supporters convening and witnessing the speech. And then Trump says, after being told by the Secret Service that he can't go, that he'll march with them. Are they aware of Trump's movements or his supporters' movements as they're pre-positioned at the Capitol? Do, do they know when the speech starts and ends? Do they say his supporters are coming now? Um, I don't know if they're aware of Trump's movement, but everyone was aware that the joint session would start at 1 p.m. So. We arrived at the Peace Circle at around 12.50, and Ryan Samsel puts his arms around uh, Biggs at around 12.52, and the barriers went down at 12.54. Did they speak of having any maps or descriptions of the building or how to get into it? No, I didn't hear any of that. Were they holding any pictures or maps of the building? I didn't see that. I don't have that in my footage. I didn't notice it if they did. Did they reference any law, any lawmakers as, as sort of waiting for them or looking for them? When you get close to the barriers, they're like there's some, you know, there, there was some shouting about um, the speaker um, and Mike Pence. Um, and, I mean, the language very changed enormously from that before. There was a lot of talk of 1776 and who streets, our streets, and where's Antifa and... They'd have riffs on that, but like once we got to the barriers, it was challenging the um, uh, the police, and the you know it was it was becoming much more confrontational. Do you think is this the violence carried out by the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers, who've both been charged with seditious conspiracy? Do you think this comes up again? I mean, have you been told to sort of stand by in case the committee wants to hear from you again? Um, yeah, I don't know if they'll be using my footage again, but we've all been told to stand by. So um, will it come again? I'm sure I'm going to be called for, you know, many of the Proud Boy trials. Oh, right, for the criminal prosecutions. Yeah. Does that make you uncomfortable or anxious, or is that just, you know, what you have is the footage and they carry out their crimes? Yeah, I, I didn't. Uh, I just filmed their actions. So, right. you, know, you know, people are saying, well, you know, you could be responsible for their incarceration. I'm like, well... But their actions. They invited you. Yeah, their actions are incarcerating them, not my footage. Does this have any impact on, on sort of your, your choices? I mean, was this sort of the the front row seat that that is the whole animating purpose behind being a filmmaker, or was this like a whoa, too too close for my comfort kind of experience for you? Oh no, I have a habit of doing this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, I'm sad. I, I find myself in the wrong place at the right time or the right place at the wrong time, depending on your perspective. A few times, like I, I was one of the last planes that landed in Turkey when the coup happened, the Gulenist coup happened. Uh, you know, I've, I've have a, um, you know, we've worked all over the world, and we seem to, you know, you know, if you're sort of if you're good at your job, you end up in these places. Well, your footage and what you documented, and as you said, the time that it happened was important enough that it is the opening statement, the opening piece of evidence introduced to the country. So we're really grateful to you for coming and talking to us about that. And thank you for having me. Thank you for testifying and, and, and sharing with all of us this really harrowing footage. Thank you so much. Thank you.